So this morning's sermon is about seeds and soil and sowing. And I don't have a joke today, but I do have kind of a cool and interesting facts or trivia to share with you. You know, in Kansas, our state flower, does anybody know what it is? It's the sunflower. You guys all know that, I imagine. And Kansas is often known as the sunflower state. It's our state flower. And it's also uh, Russia's national flower as well. Sunflower is the only flower that actually has the word flower in the name of the plant. Some flowers can grow very tall. And they can also help lift people's spirits. In the south, they can grow up to 12 feet tall within six months. They sprout up that quickly. Sunflowers must have full sun. They need to have good, rich soil. They need to have a good source of water. It has to stay moist for them to grow optimally. Experts say that you should uh, cover the seeds so that the birds will not come and pick up the young seeds. So you need to protect the sunflower plant. And sunflowers are beautiful. They can remove toxins from our soil. They take care of lead, arsenic, uranium, and other heavy metals, they can actually take them out of the soil. So oftentimes when there is a toxic spill, sunflowers will be planted to absorb the toxins from the soil and purify it again. I thought that was fascinating. The soil has, include, has calcium, vitamin A, vitamin B, all within that one little plant. Sunflowers are indigenous to the United States. Historically, they were used for medicinal purposes, for dye, for food, for oil, and they began to be sold to other countries in the year 1500. That was a lot. <clears throat> Some people have worked hard to make Oil is absolutely perfect so that you can set a new record. So they make sure that they've got plenty of loam, lots of irrigation, all the fertilizer they need, and then they get into competitions to set the record for the tallest sunflower. Now this tallest sunflower now is held by a man in Germany, uh, held by Herr Chef Schader in Germany. And his, this was set in 2014, and his sunflower grew to a height of 30 feet. <laughs> so anyway, it's good that if we take care of our soil, then they can grow even more than anticipated. Average height is 12 feet because Herr Shaler took care of his soil it got to be 30 feet tall. So this man in Germany has taught us a lot and I'm using his experience in my lesson. In the reading that David Vogt just gave us from Matthew chapter 13, verses one through nine, this is saying in verse two, the same day Jesus left the house, or prior to this, he said that Jesus left the house and was sitting there next to the lake which means that he was near the Sea of Galilee. Jesus was sitting and it said a large crowd started to surround him. So Jesus had a boat move out into the lake so that people could stand on the shore and watch. 
Now let me tell you about something. Prior to this chapter, in chapter 12, Jesus had been preaching and teaching and healing. And people were plotting to kill Jesus, so he had to keep evading them. There were people with, there was a guy with a demon that Jesus had to heal and release from that demon possession. The Pharisees and the religious leaders had berated him with questions. And even his own family came from Nazareth to where Jesus was because they thought that Jesus had lost his They wanted to bring him home. So I want you to picture without a doubt that Jesus was exhausted mentally, emotionally, physically, psychologically. He was totally worn out. Chapter 12 is, just has story after story of stress. And I cannot imagine God sending his son to earth and all that he traveled through to talk of salvation, to bring the message, and then to have the Jewish Pharisees and scribes and any of just the Israelites absolutely blame him for everything that was wrong. It's tragic. I think about John chapter 11, verse 35, when it says, Jesus wept. Jesus was sitting on the top of the hill overlooking the city of Jerusalem. And as he watched, he wept because so many of the Jewish people did not accept him as their Messiah. It's hard to imagine that, right? It's hard to imagine exactly what Jesus felt like what he was thinking about, what led him into such despair and frustration and fatigue that people would not accept this message. So it makes sense when you read chapter 12 and all of these things that have happened, that in chapter 13, it starts off with Jesus leaving the town, going to the lake and sitting, just sitting. I can just picture Jesus sitting there watching the waves ebb in and out, watching the tide, watching the birds flying through the sky, smelling the sea, and just resting, and feeling that sense of calm. But then immediately Jesus gets up and goes and gets in a boat because a large group of people descended on him and came to the shore. So Jesus got up, got in the boat, and moved out into the lake a little farther. So I'm wondering how long did Jesus get a little bit of quiet? Just a minute? Two minutes maybe? Maybe five minutes? I kind of pity him for this. You know, the Sea of Galilee has what's called an inlet. Later today, Google it and look on a map and you can see what the sea looks like. And you can see how the shoreline goes around and there's one little place where it comes into a curve. And in that curve, it's a great spot for people to come and stand on the shore. And if there's a boat out a little bit away from shore, the person can sit there and the people can see them. So I want you to visualize that. A little cove where people can be on the shore, where Jesus could be out in the boat and people could watch his sermon. It was a perfect place. Verses three through nine, I want you to imagine again, now that the mass of people on the shore and Jesus out away from the shore a bit, sitting in the boat and giving his homilies or his preachings. While Jesus was on the boat, he started to speak. And Jesus told, it says that Jesus told them many things in parables. A farmer went to sow a seed. So imagine a farmer with his bag of seeds strung across his body. And as he scattered the seeds, 
Some fell on the path. And the birds from the air came and plucked them up and ate them all. Some of the seeds fell on soil, on rocky domain that did not have much soil. So they sprouted immediately once the sun came that withered them and they died because there was not enough soil. Other seeds fell within the thorns where they would grow, but then the thorns would choke them out. Still other seeds fell on good soil where they grew, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times more than what was planted. Use those of you who have ears, listen. Let me talk about the, I'll talk about the ear thing later. Some people said that Jesus taught in parables because it was easy for the common people to understand. Jesus used everyday life experiences as examples. And so the townspeople and the village people understood. Other theologians say, disagree with that and say that um, because so many of the people denied Jesus and were plotting against him, that Jesus had to start teaching in parables in order to only be understood by those who truly wanted to attend and truly wanted to listen to Jesus's teaching. Only those who wanted to take that into their hearts and minds would understand the parables. Casual listeners would not understand that because their hearts and their minds would not be opened. Their hearts were hardened and so Jesus decided to um, just teach in parables to those who were ready to receive him. Some of them are not really easy to comprehend. Others of them are really, really obvious and easy to understand. But what this means is that we have to have the desire to listen to Jesus's words. We have to make the determination to open our hearts and our minds this day and to truly take in what Jesus is saying. It has to be a true desire to take in Jesus's words. And I think it's important that anytime you study, study the Bible, every time you read the good book, every time you listen to a sermon, first pray that the Holy Spirit will help you comprehend what you're reading and embed it in your hearts and your minds and help you to understand and accept what God's word is saying to you. If God is saying, I need to change something, if I need to stop something, if I need to start something, if I need to repent, if I need to make improvements in my ability to obey and serve and forgive and love, if I need any of those things, I want you to pray for the Holy Spirit to help you understand, accept, and make the changes. Because God will not coerce us to change. God will not force us to listen to him. God will not stand for us to come to church. It's our choice. And I think it's critical for us to take this seriously and to have the true desire to listen to the parables and to the sermons and to ask the Holy Spirit to help us open our hearts and minds to recognize our weaknesses and then be willing to make amends and to repent and change. The Holy Spirit will let you know. The Holy Spirit lets me know every day things that I need to improve and change. And that's just a lifelong process. But we have to take the initiative. We have to make the decision to pay attention to what Jesus is saying. And when Jesus is saying, those who have ears, let them hear, he's not talking about physical ears. He's talking about people who want to learn, who want to attend, who want to take in what he is saying. 
Jesus has so many messages for absolutely everyone, but you have to desire to listen to the messages. Not talking about your physical ears. Now, I personally know people in Iowa who think that deaf people can, because they do not hear, can have a waiver. That they're just automatically saved. I have to tell you, that is a fallacy. That is a total fallacy. And that's just really, I hope I never ever hear that again. Because everyone has a mind. Everyone has a heart which means you can take in God's words or you can resist God's word. It's your choice. But the cool thing is, and in this parable, Jesus explained it. Sometimes Jesus would not go on and explain the meaning, but in this one, he does. Jesus says, hey, watch, let me tell you what this means. The farmer who is sowing, let me explain to you the parable of the farmer sowing the seeds. If anyone hears the word, it means that the devil, and the, if you hear the word and then the enemy comes and steals that word from you, that's as if the seed was planted on the path. If anyone hears the word and responds with joy but has no roots, and then falls away in a short time as soon as the troubles of the world appear. That is if though it has been sown on rocky soil. If anyone hears the word and then has financial worries or other issues that send them into anxiety and the word does not bear through fruit, that's as if it's been so sown into thorny soil. Now the good soil is anyone who takes in the word, lets it take root in their hearts and minds, and then it will grow and produce 160, 30 fold more than what was originally planted. Thank, I'm just so thankful that Jesus explained this parable so clearly to us. We have to listen. We have to let Jesus's word take root in our hearts and our hearts have got to be good soil. So you have to ask yourselves, is my heart hard? We have to ask ourselves, are our hearts blind to spiritual truth? Do we not attend? Do we deny the fact of spiritual truth? The seed means the word of truth that is taken and planted within all of us, you and me, all of us. The path signifies a hard heart, which means people whose minds are closed. And no matter how much you try to explain or bring the word to them, just as Jesus got worn out, you will get worn out. Because those are people who do not want to hear the truth. They don't want to change their lives. They don't want anyone to teach them. They're just not interested. They've already left let the enemy just inhabit them and take away anything that's positive. If we have rocky soil in our hearts, it means that we are excited when we first hear the word, we wanna to get together with Christian people, we start to get highly involved, and then our minds and our hearts really have not allowed the word to take root. And so when something comes up, if there's dissonance or if there's a pro or if a problem comes up, then you'll just disappear from the church. Sometimes those folks will come back occasionally. Sometimes they just disappear and stay away forever and you never see them again. Uh, example of the thorny path meant that it's a heart that is just has so many worldly plans and desires and goals and interests that there's no thought of eternity. It's a heart that's centered on worldly gain. And worldly gain is fine, but if God, God's not going to take those away from you. 
But for those who are focused only on those things, they are not going to have the word of God in their hearts. And the good soils means those who have opened their minds and their hearts consciously, continually. They maintain a attitude of compassion and welcome and welcome the teaching and what they take in they will internalize and comprehend and let it take root in their hearts in their minds and follow it up with obedience and with that obedience comes the fruit and that's what the soil means you know, think about the sunflowers, that guy in Germany who took care of the soil and the waters and the fertilizers and saw exactly what it needed. When he saw it wasn't getting enough water, it added more. That's like our hearts. Think about what my heart needs. What, are, what do our hearts need? What do we need to change to make the soil of our heart good? And when we do that, God's word is going to flourish. And just like that sunflower, grew to the height of 30 feet, one inch. I imagine that German guy was like, holy cow, this, when is this thing going to stop growing? Because 12 feet is the average. I wonder how he probably had to climb a ladder, probably had to buy a new holler ladder to measure that, to yeah. figure out that it was 30 feet tall. I can't even imagine that. Al, go look for a taller, taller ladder. He's only got a 14 foot one. Because, you know, to decorate our Christmas tree outside, it's now 14 feet, and he's got a 10-foot ladder, so he really needs to buy a bigger one. So yesterday, he was looking for an inexpensive one. But can you imagine 30 feet? Can you imagine trying to decorate a 30-foot Christmas tree, huh? <laughs> but you know, that German sunflower grew because the soil was good. And our hearts are the soil. So I want you to think. What kind of soil do you have? And it's really important that you be honest with yourselves. You can easily deny things. That's easy. And then you're not going to have any growth. If you think, oh, my soil's good enough. Or you think, oh, my soil's just the best there can be. I don't have anything to change. I don't need to water it. I don't need to fertilize it. My soil is good. And have that kind of better than holier than now attitude, you're not going to grow much, maybe a little bit. But if you're honest and accept the fact that, yes, I do have things in my soil I need to change. I want you to think, what's your soil? Are you the path? Are you the rocks? Is your soil full of thorns? Is it good? If you are in denial of your soil, you will benefit nothing at all. However, if you are honest and attend and make the changes, you will, you will flourish. Amen and amen. All right, let us pray. Precious creator, you created the heavens and the earth and all that is within, all that has life. We pray for all of us, myself included. We pray that our soils, that our hearts will be transformed, that our hearts will be opened, that our minds will be open to take in and make the changes to repent, to learn to be better. Lord, help us to grow so that we can become seed sowers ourselves and plant seeds of love, forgiveness, service, positivity, encouragement. We can plant those seeds far and wide. Lord, help us to recognize if our soil has, is not good and we have not experienced growth because of that. God, we ask that you give us the power to transform so that we can sow seeds and become the light of the world, to show the light of Christ throughout the world that we're in. Help us as we help ourselves. In Jesus' name, amen.
God bless all of you. May God's love be with you and also with you. Thank you. Hold on just a second. Oh, amen. Hold on just a second.